Then I go to hello everyone. Um, yes, we're back on the screen again. <laughs> uh, turn the the background music way down so you can hear me. Uh, at least I hope you can hear me. If you can't hear me, uh, please say something. That was the problem last time. <laughs> um, yeah, so doing something different today. Uh, as the as the title says, we'll be. Um, I'll be showing you how I transcribe music from an audio file to a score. So uh, <laughs> I have no idea how this will go. <laughs> so, um, so I've got the. Uh, where are we? Display. <laughs> Windowsception. Uh, but yeah, we'll be using a display capture because uh, the transcription process takes a. Uh, um, multiple programs to do. So, first thing you, uh, hang on, where is everyone? Twitch. Hello. <laughs> uh, one viewer, hello. Um, so, yeah, once you've acquired your uh, sound file, we will be using a uh, um, royalty, royalty free song. Uh, this one's instrumental, so. Uh, nothing too distracting in it. Um, you want a some kind of audio software, so a digital audio workstation. I use GarageBand because it came for free on my uh, uh, my computer. Is that showing? Looks like it. <laughs> you can't really tell because it's updating so quick. Um, and actually, I can probably just full screen this. No? Where is it? <laughs> okay. I'll put this over here so we don't have to look at it. Oh, there's me. I think that can stay. Um, now, <laughs> it's still fun to look at. <laughs> um, but yeah, we get our file, put it in the uh, works uh, digital, digital audio workstation. You hearing me? Oh, okay. I need to. Uh, right. This is annoying. Right, minimize this again, and I need to add the. Uh, where is it? Audio input capture and existing desktop audio. Okay. So there we go. Still quieter than my voice. <laughs> cool. There. Yeah. So first things first, I have to ascertain the uh, time signature. So two. Sounds like four four, so there are four beats per bar, and usually when there are four beats per bar, it's uh, um, the each beat is a uh, crotchet long. Two, three, four. So, and after that, we need to ascertain the tempo of the piece. Um, we have it given to us here. We're yeah eighty two, but if you don't know, as in most cases, you. Um, can look at the waveform and see when the next big peak of uh, of the waveform is. That's usually the start of the next bar, because it corresponds with uh, um, the yeah the tall peaks correspond with the low notes. Boom, Ta -da, boom. Okay, so we just have to 
uh, I don't with garage band it's pretty easy so uh, but I there'll be other ways with uh, other uh, doors so actually first let's uh, zoom in a bit so we can see the individual bar numbers and then we lower it to get the peak at the start of bar 2 now it can be a bit tricky so uh, for instance if it looks like it's on 80 but that you see this peak here comes before the uh, start of the third bar which means that your uh, tempo is a bit slow you need to up it a bit there so now both this one and this one are on the bar on the beat yep cool and if if it's really ambiguous you can zoom out and go to the end of the song and uh, If it still lines up, then you've got it right. But if it's out of sync, you'll, you'll need to correct it. Uh, yeah. So let's let's have a listen. Okay. So that is a repeating um, sequence of two bars. So we really need to loop just two of those bars to get the full um, repeating segment. But before we do that, we need to identify which uh, instrument is the fundamental instrument, the one we should transcribe first. So you can see the uh, bass note is being played by bass. Dum, dum, dum. Ba -dum, dum. And more consistently through the song is the guitar. It's providing most of the rhythm. Often you'll find the drums. There'll be drums in the background and they'll go through most of the song providing the rhythm. If they are present and uh, go for, for most of the song, then usually do those first. Uh, but in this case we'll be doing the bass and the guitar first since they're the most um, consistent throughout the song hmm. so uh, we're lucky in this case we get the uh, instrument lists given to us but again if uh, a lot of the times that won't be the case so you'll have to identify them by ear um, so You open your scoring program, which I use MuseScore because it's free and it does everything I need. Oh, there it is, opening. <laughs> I haven't opened this in a while. <laughs> okay. Big and new score. This song is called Easy Lemon. Uh, I think I believe it's Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, yep, that's how to spell it. Cool. So, in general, you want to uh, choose the instruments yourself rather than going with a preset. Um, and though it may be tempting to add all the instruments uh, for the entire song right at the start, I find it's uh, a Bit less clutter, a bit more, but less confusing to just add the the instruments that are that you're you're transcribing right now, and then add them later. Because you can add instruments uh, afterwards once you've created the score. So uh, we have an acoustic guitar and a bass guitar. There we go. I don't know how to write tablature, so I just use the normal. Um, normal staves and that and that using normal staves you can easily transfer them to other instruments if you need to if you want to rather <laughs> and key signature we uh, you, you usually have to figure that out after you create the score uh, it doesn't say on here but um, yeah you can just leave it at that for when you for start off 
bars. Now this is where this can come in handy. Let's see. So all of the sound is done by the start of bar 43, which means 42 bars. Tempo we have just established is 82. Yep. 82. And 44 as we established. Done. Now, the first thing I do when making a new score is save it right at the start because that gets the. I don't want it in there, I want it in downloads. So I usually save things in downloads first and then transfer them to the folder that it meant to be in later. Q. I like going by a continuous view for transcribing because uh, it lets you view uh, what is it? Yeah, it lets you view things linearly. So although the bass although the acoustic art acoustic guitar is pretty fundamental to the um, the rhythm of the piece. The bass guitar is fundamental to the chords of the acoustic guitar, so we'll be transcribing the bass first. Um, loop this section. Actually, from memory, there is... yeah. Listen first and then sing along. <laughs> you learn that one in choir. Ah, uh, yes. So with uh, something simple like this, you can you can actually see where the notes are in the in the bar, and it's not all that common that you can do this, uh, but. Usually you want to listen to where the the, the changing of the of the notes. So, um, you can just count along on your fingers. I count on my fingers, or you could go one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. 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 Now I don't have perfect pitch, so I don't know what that note is before uh, actually typing it out. So I use the hotkeys the, to change the length of the note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. Yep. And you can use a dot to change the um, put an add a dot to it basically. So yeah, this one is a full bar long. Checking. Yes, that is. Start with a C. No, it's not a C. It's an A. Nice. To me, that sounds like a fourth, an interval of a fourth, which means this is a. No. <laughs> a D. Except that that is not a full bar note because it has these extra notes in the uh, right at the end. One, oops. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and doom. Mm. I just shorten this for demonstration purposes. So although it's not too obvious, um, that last bar there, the fourth bar, last beat rather, the last beat in the bar, is split up into four uh, sections. And uh, this, this note here is the second beat of the four, and this is the third beat of the four. So which means 
that this one here is three beats long and that there is a quarter of a beat rest and a quarter of a beat note. Dun, ba -dun, dun. Might be a D. No. Hang on. Dum. Mm. Uh, it's always the hardest note, the, the, sh the shortest notes that are hardest to identify. So it is a D. Dum. This one is a half note, half of the beat. So, Dum. okay. Mm -hmm. Dum. Okay. Let's move on to the. Next section. Dum dum. Ba dum dum. I'm oh, sorry. Let's listen to it first. Okay, so that is almost identical to this first two bars. Hang on. Except there is a difference in this bar here. So the last bar is split into two, last beat rather is split into two, so there's a half of a beat rest and half of a beat is the same note as the one. Hang on, I'm not sure if that half, that rest is there. Okay, so in this case, there isn't a short shortcut for this by default. You can add one if you like, but I just click on it. Yeah, so double dot means so. Uh, shall I explain the notation terminology? <laughs> uh, I think it's you can you can look it up if you don't know it. But um, yeah, in order to transcribe something, you really need to know how to write music. So. Um, that's kind of a prerequisite for this uh, tutorial. Now, as we established, this these four bars are a repeating four four bars <laughs> are a repeating sequence. So we just need to we could go ahead and and fill in the rest of the bass line, but it'd be smarter to start the um, guitar on top at this stage. Okay, so with more complicated parts like this, you'll need to analyze them uh, one bar at a time. Come to think of it, dum. we haven't add, added the key signature yet. This sounds like the tonic. There is a, um, as you get used to music, you, you, you generally get a, a good feel of where the tonic in the piece is. Um, I can't really explain how to, um, how to find it. So, key signatures. That's an A, and it's a major key, so we want A major. This one. There is a trick to memorizing the key signatures, but you know, they have tool tips, so <laughs> not really much point. Mm. 
I can hear the beginning of each half bar is before it goes up. So, okay. So that is. Yep. Except this is not a. It's one of these. Uh, it's probably one of those actually. itself twice so how does it sound now <laughs> one thing you'll have to get used to is that the instruments the default instruments in uh, MuseScore they sound nothing like real instruments so you have to uh, move past that and listen to the notes not the tone of the instrument the next bar like okay so that's the same rhythm so we can copy these notes over then alter with the note value of them rather than having to um, write out the rhythm again dun, 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 dun. that fits with the chord. Yep. So let's listen to these two. Mm -hmm. So what are the next two bars doing? So that's almost the same. You can just copy these. these yeah. This process uses a lot, a lot of copy pasting and then uh, slight alterations afterwards. This one is split into two. Oh, wrong note. Okay. Listen to listen to all four. And 
here we go. And uh, let's measure that against the original. Sounds right. There we go. So that's the end of that four bars. Okay, so that is pretty similar except for the last bar. Oops. <laughs> copy this but we need to make some alterations now alterations can't start at the end of that uh, third bar of this of the sequence one two three four one two three four one two three four okay so that's the last half beat so it's this one Here we go. Hang on, that sounds like a different instrument. Let's make sure that's a... Ah, I see. So the high note on the guitar comes before the other instrument that's laid on top. section of four bars. Wait, 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 wait. Sometimes you need to go back on yourself just to make sure. Okay. just a shortcut that GarageBand didn't recognize. But yes, we can uh, grab those first 
four bars. And uh, all those different here. <laughs> now, from memory, let's check if that third bar is any different. Not just the last bar. This is syncopated, so that means the rhythm is a bit more difficult. Yeah, so this is when you really need to count on your fingers or, or with your hand or something, is uh, the beat is different from the, the sound. Okay, so that is a one of these. Okay, so that last note is extended. There we go. Hang on, the bass is probably different as well. Nope, apparently not. <laughs> now this, from memory, is different. guitar part is different. Uh, remember we're focusing on the bass and guitar, so the bass part is no different than before. But the guitar part is different. Stretchy. Oops, one bar at a time. Can be difficult to isolate certain one instrument from another at times. a dotted crotchet but uh, it's when working in 4-4 four four, uh, or in any um, symmetrical <laughs> uh, even numbered um, time signature you generally want to keep uh, an invisible line through the middle so to deal with notes that cross that line you put a tie in between you put two notes in the tie in between them they're functionally one note, but they're written as two. Hmm. Now, sometimes you'll run up to questions that, uh, as to whether certain um, whether certain decisions in the original piece were intentional and uh, or whether you want to um, to transcribe them as they are or to snap them to the nearest beat. So that last beat of the bar 
last note there. That note comes very, comes shortly after the, the start of the fourth beat. Dun. 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 Now, for simplicity's sake, I will snap that to the the bar. Oh, that note, that one. Okay, that's a different. Now comes the hard part, deciding whether each of those spikes is uh, one note on the guitar or multiple. It sounds like they're two notes except for that third bar. So is the other note higher or lower than the one we've already got? That's that one. Thank you. 
sure about that. Oh well, for simplicity's sake, let's just take the one, make it monophonic for now. So, on to the next section of four bars. So that's the same as the first section of four bars. Here we go. one okay so we're just focusing on the bass and guitar parts for now they're uh, repeating identically uh, it's the instruments around them that are changing so it kind of takes the pressure off this stage seems like a two bar section okay dum. these are half bars so Let's just check that the other one is the same. Uh, what? Oh. Uh, hmm. I was listening to the wrong instrument. still Okay. 
So yeah, this one as well. That is a B. This is almost the same. Yep. confused earlier because the guitar is also is playing one octave up from the bass so no not you yep right there is a quaver wrong button Wait a minute. There we go. Dun, dun. Yep. Except we put the wrong note values to that. Let's put the uh, these ones in first. I'll just since this is basically the same throughout the repetition. So what's the last part doing? section a bit wrong. Right, okay. So I believe these lower notes are in a separate voice uh, in terms of score, so I believe the shortcut is... Uh, can I not do that? Okay then. I have to redo them in the second voice. Just 
which means Sounds about right. Cool. Okay, that's almost the same. This last section is completely different. Sounds right. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's grab those four bars. Copy them, paste here. So it's this last bar that is different. in the context of the Is that a sharp or a flat? I'm thinking sharp because it's the B on the bottom. Is that to make a B major, I guess? Okay. Now I believe it's back to normal. First four bars, no, all of the first four bars. Now, Dum. 
don't, don't do this one. Getting my hotkeys mixed up. Hang on. Now there's some other instruments in there, so just need to isolate the guitar. That might not be on that last note actually. Yeah, well, let's go with that. Uh, which means basically finish these first two uh, instrument parts. Now I need to find out which instruments to transcribe next. difficult for me to figure out what kind of instrument it is because um, it sounds so generic but um, we can from the given instruments we can tell that it's either a solista or a marimba let's add them both to see what kind what uh, oh whoops need all instruments solista and we need the lower stave. And marimba? Where is it? Oh, it might be under uh, percussion. Marimba, single stave. There we go. Uh, no, you go away. So, what does this sound like? Okay, what about you? Right. So you've got the ding and you've got the do. Hmm. So what's Okay, that's a do. Let's uh You there. And we're on buff five. Yep. hours left uh, unless we can extend the screen past lunchtime <laughs> and so that was a C using these minims. 
you know, double dotted minims, yeah. leaving uh, enough room in the bar for a quaver. See that in context. Okay. Okay, so that's just in these two bars, it's just that one. Cool. On bar eight, that's a ding, so that's on the solista. the same as that as this one. Just one little modification. Okay then. Okay, let's Oops. not right because it is the next one over. Not sure about that first note.
step, I think that first note is in mid, no, 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 is it? Yeah, that first note is not there. And Sure, that top note's the Celeste. Yeah. Oops. Uh, let's just put a C there. No? Fit D. D fits better on the chord. So the bass, the basic note, why is this? Here we go, those two aren't supposed to be linked. just before the guitar. Cool. Is that last bit?
Okay. Oops. Okay, that continues until the start of bar 25. Um, that's the start of bar 25. So that's 3334. That's basically this. stuck. There we go, just had to save. So I select the second bar. Okay. Hmm. 
need to That's the marimba and solista done. Last one is the drum kit, I believe. Yep. Percussion unpitched drum set. No, we want you at the bottom. So you're the fundamental. Why are you back? Okay, so the drum set doesn't come in until later on in the piece. An important part of transcribing mu um, music is that it must be a song that you enjoy. Because <laughs> you're going to listen to it over and over again. And uh, if, it's, if you don't enjoy the song to begin with, it's, it's going to be really tough. off there. <laughs> Missed the start of the drum set. So that one power is that is sixteen. Sixteen, cool. Mm-hmm. Now what's also why are those notes so small? the hard part. Well, a lot of parts are the hard part, so I'm not very familiar with drums, so I need... it's kind of difficult to identify. I think that's a ride cymbal. Or just the hi-hat. I 
Let's put the ride there anyway. Yeah, it sounds close enough. Set. Let's have a listen to the four bar section and then um, break it down. stick and uh, close high hat. Um, hang on. Yep. So that's a one beat. And in these in betweens, we want this to be in a For this, okay. Of the closed hi hats, that is that's the closed hi hat, okay. Hmm, pretty clear. Uh, pattern of stress, so let's, where is it under articulations, I have to click the triangle, there's this one, oh, oh, there was a shortcut for it, wasn't it, um, nope, Click the thing in the menu. Yep, that looks right. So let's copy this for the next three bars. And then last, this one. Let's see. That's just an open hi hat, I believe. Wrong way. Yep. Yep. So hmm. Aside from those toms at the end, is this any different from... Yeah, okay, so they're open hi-hats instead of close. voice and item 
low mid tom low tom that should do Getting a bit confusing. <laughs> what if we. That doesn't help much, does it? Get rid of these rests. <laughs> Can't really hear them either. Okay. Yep, they're in the right place. What's after that? Sticks are all snares. There we go. Hang on. Is that a crash? Sounds like a floor tom. Q. That'll do. Oh, and Four. There we go. Other than that, let's see what the rest of this phrase is doing. So there's another crash symbol here. Yep. Uh, there are Thomas. Did not give your name. Okay. 
Okay. Wow, that's confusing. <laughs> I think this is not there though. similar to this one. Hmm, hang on, is there something different about that last part? something in the previous uh, mm. is that significant enough to include So hard to tell which is the bass and which is the kick drum. Last bar, as usual, is slightly different.
Okay. Not you. You. Wait, 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 wait. Oops. Hang on. I think that was going the wrong way. You. Hmm. Yes, you do. Listen through the whole thing. Yeah, this. <laughs> Default guitar sound is really distracting. <laughs> for something resembling acoustic guitar. Uh, don't seem to have one. A Hawaiian guitar? What is that? Uh, 
Oh, let's try this one. Ah, that's much nicer. Still a bit jarring. <laughs> Transitioning from its lovely sounding acoustic guitar to this artificial tone. <laughs> I haven't put any dynamics on this either, so that's part of the problem. Generally, dynamics are the last thing you do in, a, in an arrangement, so... Here we go. This is a more interesting part of the song. <laughs> oh, these default uh, sounds. is a bit jarring. Let's see, what is that? Bar 28. Nice. Okay. We've basically finished the song. So, you know, let's make it page view. Uh, there we go. Ah, one thing I like to do once I've finished a uh, score is to, I think it's in format. Settings. No, not page settings. Uh, recently upgraded to Musical 3. Uh, hide empty staves. There we go. Even. So that took an hour and three quarters. Any, although I did kind of go kind of quickly through that. What, what is that? Okay then. No, not you. Yeah, one viewer. So, my single viewer, is there anything about that? Any questions you have after that? Because uh, there is a lot I skipped over. <laughs> hmm. hmm. 
Ora. Okay. Hang on a sec. Okay, cool, that's working. Hmm. Okay, no questions. It's just <laughs> uh, okay, okay, let's uh Oh, that uh, background music is really quiet now. <laughs> hmm. Who can we raid? Uh, oh, where will we go? Kaki uh, Dano. Hmm. 